In this video we're going to be looking at planes and vectors. These are very useful construction objects inside Alias. By default we're generally working in the world axis system which is this one here. But planes gives us a way of creating another axis system. So these are planes here. If we want to go and move to a plane we can use either the construction set CP or we can use the marking menu and that takes us to another set of axes here. It's called set CP and CP stands for construction plane. You can see the world axis is still greyed out there and if we want to toggle between that plane and the world axis we can go into toggle CP and that will just take us backwards and forwards between the world axis and the current construction plane. You'll notice that all operations including the view cube are now related to this axis system. So planes are useful for constructing geometry in a different axis system but also for viewing the model in that axis system. If we want to have a look at that plane in more detail we can go and pick that as an object look in the information window and the first thing that we see is that it's got a name so we can call it whatever we want to very important if that's a tool direction or a symmetry plane that we name it appropriately the other thing that we can edit here is the scale and what that means is just the scale of the symbol that's useful if you find that the symbol is a bit difficult to see and you just want to scale it up it's only the first two values that matter the third value doesn't do anything now if we go back to our world axis system and we have a look at this plane for example here we can see if we look at the rotation there about x, y and z it's saying that it's parallel to the world axis so sometimes it's important to have a look at these values here and the other value that may be important is the origin of the plane now with vectors all the vector does is define a direction and we can see in the information window the x, y and z values relative to the world space. We can also represent that as rotation. So this is rotation about each of those axes. In general I prefer to use the vector option. Not so easy on that particular one but this one here we can see that it's parallel to the x-axis by the values in this vector here 1, 0, 0. Again we've got a name that can be very important if, we, if we're using that vector as a tool direction or another use of it is an axis for a revolved surface and in that case then the origin of the, the vector becomes important in other words the start point. Let's now look at how we create planes. We've got a number of options here the first one is view all this requires is a single location so if I pick a grid point there you can see it's created as a plane which is parallel to the view. Now the space bar will set that construction plane. So there's our world axis system grayed out and we're now in that new construction plane. But we don't have to go into the construction plane. If I toggle back to world space and create another view plane. If I don't press the space bar and just say pick nothing then we've got a plane there but we haven't actually gone into it. One use of the plane view option is where we've got a curve on surface which looks like it might be a straight line in a particular view. So to get an idea of whether that is true or not we can put in a line degree 1 from one end of the curve on surface to the other and rotate it around, maybe zoom in and rotate that model until we get visually the best fit of that curve on surface to that straight line. And once we've got that then we can create a plane parallel to that view. Now it doesn't really matter where we attach it because we're just after the Z direction of that plane really. But because it's related to this surface I'm going to just pick the edge of that surface there. 
and then we can use that line and project it onto that surface. So we can project it in Z of the construction plane. And that's created us a new curve on surface there. So let's get rid of the other curve on surface. So that was the original one. And if we just check using the view cube in that direction, we can see that our curve on surface now, if I get rid of that line, looks perfectly straight. The next option in plane is slice. And what this lets us do is create a plane from two points. So I'll pick one point here and another one here. And if we go into that construction plane, you can see it's created us a Y axis between the two points. The X axis is coming out at us and the Z axis is of course 90 degrees to those two planes. Now one possible use of this, we just go back to the world axis is if we've got some curves here, which again, we're trying to planarize those. We want to get those onto a straight line. And once more, if we use a straight line between that point and that point, we can just rotate that around until it looks like a best fit. You can squash the view up, of course, if you want to. And once we've got that, then we can create a sliced plane between those two endpoints. So that plane will be coming out at us in that view. We set that construction plane, rotate that around. We don't need this straight line anymore. And we can then project those curves onto that plane. And the way that we can do that is if we go into Curve Edit, Curve Plane Rise, and we use the User Defined Plane option. So we'll pick the curves and then pick the construction plane and it's immediately put those curves onto that plane so let's get rid of the originals and if we rotate that around we we'll use the view cube to look at that you can see that that's planarized that curve onto that plane so the third option in the plane menu is three point the first point is going to be the origin of the plane, second point will be the X direction, and the third point will define the plane. So I've picked three grid points there, and so we know that this is going to be accurate. If I have a look at that in terms of the information window, it says rotate 0, 0, 0, and that means that the X, Y, and Z of the new plane are completely parallel to the world axis, which is what we want. Now the danger with three point is picking points which aren't accurate. For example, on scan data, we may well find that we have an inaccurate result and it's always worth checking in your information window that you've got a good result. Often a better option than three point is world. And this is useful where we want a plane which is parallel to the world axis system. And all it requires is one location which is gonna be the origin of the plane So it immediately creates a plane for us. And if we go and have a look at that in the information window, you can see that that's got rotate zero, zero, zero. In other words, it's completely parallel to the world axis system. The final option in the plane function is geometry. And this allows us to pick things like surfaces and curves and curves on surface. So here I'm gonna pick on an edge And you can see the X and Y directions are parallel to the U and V. And the Z direction is of course normal to the surface. So if I want to, I can drag that across the surface and you can see the axes are changing as the normal of the surface changes. Similarly with curves, we can create a plane on a curve using geometry. And this time the X axis is along the curve and the Y and the Z are of course normal to that curve. One use of this is where we drag this right to the end and we can use these little square symbols here to swing that around through 90 degrees and that gives us a plane which is at 90 degrees to the end of the curve 
and that would be useful where we want to create a profile curve which we're then going to rail or profile along this curve. One of the rather strange things about planes is the way the history works. So let's create a plane using world and then we're going to click on next plane and do one using view create one using slice but in this case I'm going to use control and alt to slide along to the ends of that curve there and then the next one we're going to create on some geometry now hopefully you can see from the color of those planes there that those have got history and these don't appear to have so if we take that surface for example put some CVs on it and then move those around we'd expect to see that plane update which it does and the same with this curve here if we go and move that CV there we'd obviously expect to see that plane change also if we go and query edit those planes we'd expect to be able to move that around which we can do what we wouldn't expect is to be able to query edit these ones which don't appear to have history on but we can actually change those so slightly strange but actually very useful now on this slice one here I created that by sliding the points to the ends but if I get rid of that plane if instead I went into plane slice and just pick those two endpoints using control now you can see that that's blue it's not actually that green color so it doesn't appear to have any history on it and if I move that CV you can see it doesn't update so creating planes with history on off the end points only works if I slide to the end and the same thing works on the surface if I said view go and I pick that corner point for example that doesn't have history on so if I move that CV around it doesn't update whereas if I go plane view go and then slide along to the end that does have history on now when I move that CV you can see that updates now sometimes you might not want history on of course and as for all objects you can go and pick that object and delete the construction history if you wanted to so now that's no longer connected to that corner to create a vector we can use the vector function so this requires one or two points so if we just create a vector with one point to start with you can see that vector is pointing in the same direction as the X if I go and create another vector so this time I'm going to do it with two points so I'm going to pick that point then another point on the grid and then we'll create a third one so a point on the grid and then a random point there and if we look at those objects in the information window you can see the vector values here 1 0 0 and that means that that vector is pointing entirely in the X direction so the start point there is this origin point and the end point is this point here if we're looking at tool directions then the only thing that we're really interested in is this vector direction if this vector is defining an axis of a revolve then we need to know the origin as well now let's have a look at the next point so this has got a vector of 0 1 0 so that means it's entirely pointing in the y direction and if we look at this last one which is random then these values are non-zero but the z value is zero so that means that that vector lies in the plane x y it has no z component as with planes we can name these and obviously it's very important that we do that if we're dealing with tool directions or axes that may be used in the future we've talked so far about construction planes and vectors and how to build them but what are their uses well one use is where we have a component such as a steering wheel where the axis of the steering wheel isn't going to be parallel to world space and the symmetry plane is not y0 in this case we could use layer symmetry with our own construction plane so that we can see the other part of the symmetric component we can also use the same plane if we need to mirror that geometry across we can use planes and vectors for axes for revolved shapes we've already seen how we can build a construction plane on the end of a curve 
or the end of a curve on surface where we can then build a profile curve for either rail or profile. Construction planes and vectors can be used for tool directions. If we have a component such as a wing mirror which we need to copy and paste to the other side of the vehicle we can use a function called place with two planes to do that very efficiently. There's many different ways in which we can use planes for tidying CVs. If we have a feature line, maybe consisting of multiple curves, where we need the side view to be completely straight at all times, then using a plane is a very efficient way of maintaining that curve. And finally, we can use construction planes in the align function, and also for when we're doing manual CV movements. Let's look at some of the uses of planes and vectors using some more real world geometry. So here we've got a simple IP and the first thing that we notice is that there are components which are symmetric such as the steering wheel, such as the bezels and the inner part of the binnacle. So we're just going to isolate the inner part of the binnacle and there you can see we've got a plane called binnacle sim and we've also got layer symmetry on so we can see the other side of that that geometry so I'm going to take the symmetry off I'll get rid of this plane and we'll just go through the process of building that plane and creating symmetry for that layer now intuitively we might feel that we need a plane that's vertical that's parallel to Y0 in order to get the symmetry so let's build that first so if we go into plane as I've said before three points we could use as an option but it's often better to use world if we want it parallel to one of the world axes so we're going to use world we can attach it to this edge here but it's not the plane that we want we want to swing that th round through 90 degrees so we click on the little square symbol there and now we've got a plane that's going to give us our symmetry and we'll go into that plane so now we want to put layer symmetry on there so we've got the layer selected if we go into layers symmetry set plane and pick that plane and then the space bar and then we put the symmetry on we can see that we've got symmetry there or a visual symmetry so intuitively that makes sense that we've got that plane in a vertical position but the problem is if we look at this through the view cube so we look at the top view of that it's actually what we would think of as side view and we can rotate that around so that it's more the orientation that, that's similar to the orientation if we were to view this in world space but you can see that we're looking in top view rather than a side view and that's because of the choice of plane that we've made so let's take the symmetry off We'll toggle back to world space. We'll delete that plane. And we're going to look at another option. So the other way we could do this is if we go into plane, we'll still pick world and then go and then pick a point on the geometry on the center line there. And we're just going to use that plane. So that plane is in exactly the same orientation as world axes. So let's set that plane there. And now when we go into the view cube and we look at that from the right hand side it's very similar to looking at it in the world space it's, it's a little bit easier to think about when we're looking at views and that will save us a considerable amount of time if we're viewing that from those those angles so the question is how do we make that symmetric using the layers well it's exactly the same process but we use layer symmetry set plane and we could go and pick that plane but you'll notice that this plane symbol has exactly the same squares on it that enable us to swing that around so we can actually set the symmetry plane as 90 degrees to the plane that we've created and so now when we put symmetry on it's in exactly the same orientation as we had before so you can use either method but I feel that this is slightly more intuitive once we've established that in the sense that we can view that from the right hand side and the top etc 
in a similar fashion to how we were used to viewing it when we were in world space. One thing we should be careful of here is that we've created a plane off the center line of this geometry and if you recall earlier on we talked about the history of planes that actually that plane is still attached to this surface and if we change that surface in any way then the plane is going to move and we don't want that so we should delete the history of that and now it won't matter whether we move the geometry or not it will always be in the same place at the moment we've got layer symmetry on so we can see a mirror image of this geometry supposing we wanted the real geometry well there's a number of different ways in which we can do this I always like to use the simplest and most consistent methods so the first option is to use layer symmetry again so if we go into layer symmetry and we can then say create geometry and that would just create geometry on that side rather than just an image what this means is that these are separate surfaces so I can delete that side but you can see it's kept this side it's not deleted that so that's a copy of the geometry as opposed to just the visual reference so that's one option if I want to get rid of that I need to go into the back view pick those surfaces and delete them the other option if we pick all of these surfaces is to use the plane again so we're actually in that plane at the moment and then we can go into mirror which is on the marking menu and if we go into the box there we can specify which axis we're mirroring that about so we've got duplicate on we want to mirror it about the X and Z plane there so a very similar result to using the layer symmetry option now if I delete that geometry often what we want to do is group surfaces together and this works extremely well here so if we pick those surfaces and we group them together so we can now pick all of that as one object we can then use mirror in exactly the same way so mirroring about X head again and we've now got a group on the other side so the advantage of this is that we can easily pick that group if we needed to get rid of it and re-mirror that geometry across if we've made a change to this geometry and we need to mirror the new group across that's much easier as a group so what if we wanted to mirror that group across using layer symmetry first of all we need to put symmetry on here and then we go into layer symmetry create geometry now this doesn't work quite in the same way as mirror if I go and pick that left hand group it's actually a group of everything and if we look in the SPD window you can see that's created a single node with all of that geometry underneath it that means we no longer have the two groups there we just have one big group which is a disadvantage because then we have to go and delete individual surfaces again on the other side so I would say that in general the best option is to use mirror with the appropriate axes that we want we've seen how if we group objects together and then mirror them that's quite a good way of doing things because it means we can delete the mirrored version very quickly as a group there's one issue that you need to be aware of in terms of groups versus surfaces and how they behave when you mirror them so if we take these blue spheres here and we pick those and then group them together notice that the pivot point of that group is at the origin of the axis system that we are using which at the moment is with the world axis so I've grouped these together with that as the pivot point if I select this plane here and then group these surfaces together you'll see that the pivot point of the group is now at this origin so compared with the other one which is at the origin of world space now if we pick those two groups and we use the mirror function and I'm going to mirror them about the X Y of this plane so we've got duplicate X Y on and we'll look at that from the side view there and you can see that's mirrored it about X Y exactly as you would expect and the pivot points have taken no part in that whatsoever if I delete the mirrored version 
and we go back into world space and we mirror these objects these two groups again it's going to be about XY and it mirrors exactly as you'd expect there's your XY plane and it's mirroring about that plane so no problem at all there so the fact that there's two different pivot points is not relevant let's delete those groups now if instead we pick these as surfaces and we mirror them again about XY and we look at that in the side view there you can see the two groups or the two sets of surfaces are behaving differently so the red ones if we look back at that group there we see the pivot point was here and if we look in the right view it's actually mirroring about a plane parallel to this XY plane but actually positioned at that pivot point whereas the other group if we pick that there's the pivot point so it's mirrored about the XY plane at that pivot point so the behavior of the group and the individual services is quite different when it comes to mirroring so the individual services are using the pivot point of the group but the group itself doesn't depend on the pivot point in terms of mirroring so if we want to mirror about this plane here for example then the solution is simply to put the pivot point at that origin so this one was the one that had the pivot point at the origin of world axes and we just need to move the pivot point of the group to that point there and then when we pick individual surfaces and mirror those and let's look at that in the side view again it's mirroring as we'd expect it to, to mirror so if we pick all of those surfaces and mirror them all they're all now behaving exactly as you'd expect and if we pick them as two groups and mirror them they also behave in exactly the same way so it's a, a very simple solution to some something of a puzzling enigma sometimes if you're going to group something and you want to mirror it about a particular plane then set the pivot point of the group to the origin of that plane and then you won't have that problem if you're taking individual surfaces and mirroring those separately to the group in general you should actually mirror the whole group but sometimes you might feel that you need to mirror a particular surface across and then you'll get that rather puzzling issue occurring so here's an example where we're using plane for a, a revolved surface so the plane serves several functions here first of all it's a symmetry plane so we've got our symmetry on here secondly we've got the orientation of that plane very similar to the world axis so that when we view it from various directions like we've seen before it's a lot easier to understand the orientation of that in relation to something that we're very familiar with which is viewing it from the world space the X direction is going to define the center axis of the revolve and the other thing that we can do is from the side view we can see that the profile that we're using is actually on that side plane so it's much better to use one plane here rather than several and then we get a consistency we don't have the possibility of errors creeping in because the planes don't quite line up so we're going to start off by deleting these surfaces and just rebuilding that revolve so revolve is under surfaces and we'll start by picking the curves that we want and you can see that makes no sense at all at the minute it's revolving it around the wrong axis at the minute we can specify X, Y or Z and that applies to the current construction plane so if we go for X we have that which is exactly what we want so it's given us a half steering wheel on this side and because we've got layer symmetry on we're seeing the other side as well and you'll notice I've got a sweep angle of 180 degrees with two segments so in other words two sets of surfaces degree 7 and that gives us a very accurate result in terms of the circularity of the steering wheel the reason I'm going to have symmetry on here is because usually steering wheels are not completely circular there may be lumps and bumps in there on one side which we then need to mirror across so we, instead of doing a revolve through 360 degrees I'm just doing a half model which will then mirror across at a later stage now if I toggle back to world axis and I decided that I didn't like that steering wheel I needed to change the profile 
So I'm going to delete those surfaces. I go back into Resolve. I pick those curves. And you can see because I'm in world space, it's done something very strange. It's actually using the world axis system to create that axis. And it's because I'm not in the plane that I should be in. So it's a minor inconvenience, but it does mean if I want to recreate that steering wheel, I have to actually go into that plane to do it. So rather than that, what we can do is we can define a vector. So if we go into the vector menu and all we need is one position, which is going to be the center of this plane, and that gives us a vector down the X axis. If that wasn't what we wanted, then we can always change the second point to something else. If that's not a point that's going to lie on the grid and we need some arbitrary axis, then it's probably easiest to put a line in first and then put the vector on the line. So we'll pick nothing. We'll toggle back into the world axis system and then we'll go back into Revolve, pick those curves, and of course we get the wrong result. But now this time we're going to use picked rather than X. So if I say picked, I can then go and pick that vector and it's using that vector as the axis for the revolve. So the benefit of that is that we don't need to be in the plane in order to create that steering wheel. And it's worth, as we've said before, picking that vector and just giving it a name. And it's only when we pick nothing that it'll come up on the screen there. So another use of plane is where we want to create a profile. So in this case we'd use geometry. We can slide the plane along to the end of that curve for example. Swing it through 90 degrees. So we've now got a plane there which if we say set the construction plane we can build geometry on. So let's build a circle. And we'll just scale that up a bit so we can see it. And then we can go and profile that for example. And the same thing would apply is if we've got a curve on surface like we have on this lower surface here. Slide it along to the end, swing it through 90 degrees, set the CP. So if we put the grid on you can see that that's where we've gone. And again just for simplicity we'll put a circle in. and then we could profile that along and we might in that case want to do it using the surface normal so a very useful function of planes another really important use of planes and vectors is for defining tool directions so here what we're going to do is going to isolate these bezels And you can see that we've got a plane here which is defining the symmetry. But if we look at that in the side view, that plane is just parallel to world axes at the minute. So it doesn't define a tool direction at all. Now before we can analyze tool direction or draft angles, we need to make sure that the surface normals are all pointing the same way. And you can see they're not, so some of them are yellow, some of them are blue. So let's make them all uniform. Now whether we point that normal outwards or inwards doesn't really matter as long as it's consistent. I'm going to make them point out. So now all the normals are pointing the same way. If we go into the diagnostics and we put surface evaluate on with draft angle on, we can see what we've got so far. So the vector direction is 1, 0, 0, which means it's going to be parallel to the x-axis of world space at the minute. And we want 2 degrees of draft, so we're going to put in 2 degrees positive and 2 degrees negative. And what we're looking for is either all of the surfaces blue or green. We just don't want to see any red on those surfaces at all.
Now clearly this tool direction doesn't work so we need to rotate that tool direction and the easiest way to do that is to use the manipulator. So click on show manip and there's the current tool direction so we can rotate that around until all of this goes blue. So it's the internal surfaces that are going to be the most critical and you can see that's all blue. You'll also see that the vector numbers have changed. The other way of looking at the vector is to look at the rotation relative to the world axis system. So it says 0, 68 point something and 0. So what we might want to do is just make that a nice round number. So let's try 68. Now what that does is it updates the direction but it doesn't update the manipulator. For example if I put in 40 degrees you'll see that the actual analysis changes but the tool direction doesn't change. So if we want the tool direction to stay in tune with that we have to click on the show manipulator again and it will rotate it to the angle that we've actually typed in there. So if you remember we had 68 there so let's type in 68 and click on show manipulator just to make sure it's in the right direction. And from that, if we look down the bottom right, we can say retain vector. So that now gives us a vector in the direction that we've, we've found from the draft angle analysis there. Now what we're trying to do is we really want, ideally, a play, one plane that defines the tool direction and maybe a vector as well. So we want to move this vector onto that plane. So let's go and pick that plane and then we're going to pick that vector and we're just going to move it to the center of that plane. And now we want a plane that is also orientated in the same direction as that vector. So if we look at that from the back view and then create a plane off that vector, so I'm going to use geometry and that's created as a plane. Now the plane here is not in the same orientation that we really want. So as before we want a plane that's orientated in a similar way to the world axis because it just makes viewing a lot easier then. So we'll say set that construction plane there and we'll take the shading off so we can see what's going on and we'll get rid of the original plane here. Now if we select that vector, you'll see that the plane highlights as well, which it sort of implies there's a connection between the two. And you might think that we can break that by deleting the history. But in fact it says no active objects have construction history. So if we delete the vector then the plane will go as well, which we don't want. What we do want to do is create a new plane here, which is roughly parallel to the original world axis so that when we come to view the objects it's a lot easier to understand. And the way we can do that is from three points and it's probably easiest just to go into the view that's appropriate in that case. We need to include the world axis in the view so that we can see what's going on. So we want X going up and Y going left to right. So we can use three points here. If we go into the plane function, three points and we can pick the grid points. So the center there, I'm going to pick away from the vector and then pick over here as well. So that will create a construction plane which has got a similar orientation to the world axis system. And now if we go and select that CP there, when we're viewing that geometry it's going to be in a similar relationship to the world axis. So it's a little bit more understandable as we swing that geometry around. Now we can get rid of this plane because that one won't actually delete the vector. It's the vector that we have to be careful of not deleting. So we can get rid of that. So whenever we're doing A-class work we always want to make sure that everything that we do is accurate. So let's go and toggle back to the original world axis system there and we're just going to check this geometry in terms of the orientation of that to the world axis. So if we go into the information window, what we're looking for, so we've got plane here and vector here. On the plane, in terms of the world axis, we've got a rotation of that plane compared with the world axis around only the y-axis. 
So we should expect the rotation around x and z to be zero. And if we look across here, it says zero on x and zero on z with just a y value. And we'd expect that to be a nice round number because we put in 68 as the rotation of the tool direction, if you remember. And if we look at the vector, that's exactly what we've got there. So if we want to understand these angles a little bit more, then the 22 degrees, if we look at that from the right hand side there, what that means is that that plane is rotated about the y-axis by 22 degrees and it's a negative value because it uses we're using the right hand thumb rule so in other words if you put your thumb pointing in the y direction then the positive rotation is the way that your hand rotates so a positive 22 would be going down this way a negative 22 is going up this way with the vector at 68 degrees well, when we've put vectors in before off a plane, it's, it goes in the x direction. But if we do that, so if we put in a new vector, and we'll set it at that origin point there, you can see the rotation is actually 0, 90, 0. So that's already at 90 degrees to this axis system. And if we set it to 0, you'll see it's actually the z direction that's the 0 point there. So let's go back to that vector there. So in other words, in this case, we've rotated the vector from its zero position, which would be vertical, 68 degrees round in a positive sense. And again, using the right hand thumb rule, if you put your thumb going in the y direction, you can see that 68 degrees is the positive direction. So we've defined a tool direction in terms of a vector. And we've also got the plane there which we know are consistent because we've just checked those. So in future, we can use that as our tool direction and we can use that plane again for symmetry and also for viewing. If at any time in the future, we want to analyze the draft angles again using this tool direction, then we can go into our diagnostics, switch the draft angle analysis on, and then we can go and pick that vector and update from selection and that will give us the same angles that we had before, 0, 68, 0. Suppose we need to move an object from one position to another. So here we've got a steering wheel, we've got an original plane that defines our symmetry and the axis for revolve, and then we need to move it to, to a new position, which is defined by this plane. So we can use the planes to move that steering wheel using transform place. Now we have to have grouped all of these surfaces together into one object because it will only accept an object. So we pick the object and then it's asking for a from location. So this will be the first construction plane. Hit the space bar to accept that. And then it wants a to location, which is the second plane. Again, we hit the space bar to accept that. And then finally hit the space bar once more to place it in the new position. And the beauty of this function is that we can rerun that movement on new geometry. If new geometry comes in in the old position, we can easily move it into the new location using exactly the same planes. So here's a slightly more complex example. So we need to get a copy of this mirror across to the other side, and it's going to be at a slightly different angle from left to right. So first of all, we need to mirror that. So we're going to pick this plane here. We're going to pick that object and mirror it. So we're mirroring it about the XZ of that current construction plane. So XZ. And then we're going to take that duplicate there across to the other side using place. So our from location is this plane here. And then the to location is this plane here. And then we've placed it across to the other side. When it comes to tidying CVs, then planes have a multitude of uses. In this example, we've got a surface with some rather wobbly CVs that we want to tidy up. If we look at this left hand edge there, we've got a straight line in that view. If you look at the right hand edge, we've got more or less a straight line in that view as well. So that would lead you to expect that these holes in between ought to be linear as well in a particular view. And we can rotate the model around until the left and the right hand sides are about linear in a particular view. So in that view, 
you can see that forms a straight line and over this side as well. So the CVs in between, they ought to be fanning out between those two end conditions. Now we can get a reasonable result if we go and just planarize that with best fit and it's in the V direction that we're interested in. So that sort of straightens them up a bit. But if we look at that closely, then you can see these aren't planar. They're not perfect. So another way of doing this is a more constructed way using planes. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to put a plane on this end and a plane on this end, which are best fits to those edges, and then find where they intersect. And where that intersect is, that will give us the direction in which we need to view the model in terms of creating planar CVs. So first of all, we go into plane and we're going to use three points. So we'll pick the end point and then some point in the middle, it doesn't have to be exactly the middle. And then we'll do the same thing on this end. So we've now got our two planes and we're going to find the intersect between those two planes. And to do that, we need to put a surface on one of the planes. So this one here that we've gone into at the minute, let's create a planar surface, degree one, doesn't need to be anything else. And we're going to scale that. So we need it pretty big because we want to find the intersect of this plane and that surface. And we're going to do that using sections. So if we go and pick the other CP, and then we're going to put some a section on, and we'll put a Z section on. So we're trying to find the intersect with this surface here. And there's our section. And if we were to look down that section line, then we'd see the similar view to the one we had before where we did this visually. But we're going to do this a bit more accurately than before. So we're going to use plane here. We're going to go with geometry and pick that section. And you can see the Z direction of that plane is now pointing along the section line there. And if we were to view that from the top, you can see a similar view to the one we had before where the end there and the end there are linear. And so all of the CVs in between, they also need to be linear. Now we want to make sure that's got no history on it because we don't want that moving. So I'm going to go and delete the construction history there. So then when we get rid of the surface or we move anything around, then that plane is not going to move unexpectedly. Now we need to decide on which edge we're going to keep, either this edge or that edge in terms of the CVs. So it really doesn't matter, it depends on which one we think is the better one. So I'm just going to go for the top one. And the way we're going to create the planes is in this view, we're going to create a number of sliced planes between the center point or the origin of that plane and the CVs on this edge. We'll get rid of these sections. Don't need those. So I'm going to create some curves first of all. So I just want to create a curve from the origin to this CV here. And then one from that CV back to the origin again, a whole series of them. So now we've got our curves. So if we look at that from that view, we're going to use those to create some planes. So let's isolate those so we can clearly see what's going on. And we're going to use slice. It doesn't really matter where we position these on these lines, but I want a plane that looks like it goes through that line, but comes straight out at us. So I'm just going to pick the end point and some point on that curve. So that's created this a plane which comes straight out at us. And I'll do the same on this one. And then we'll bring everything back in. So we've got these planes. And the reason I chose those endpoints there is it's just easy to see those planes then in relation to the surface. Now we can get rid of these curves, we don't need those. And that will also delete the history of these planes. Now you notice the other planes have got history on. We actually want to move those planes. So I'm going to move that one to this corner here. And I'm going to move the other one to this corner here. 
So we're not changing the orientation of those planes, it's just for convenience that we can see all of the planes in one area there. And then I want to make sure that we get history of these so that we don't end up accidentally moving them when we move the geometry around. So we should find that if we look in the top view of this plane, that all of those planes are sticking out towards us and all of these planes we're going to use to tidy up those CVs. And that includes the end ones because if you notice that on the ends those those ends are not exactly linear and we just want to make sure that they are. So to get those CVs onto those planes we can go into move CV. And what we want to do is use this projected option here. It lets us pick only one CV at a time and so what we'll have to do is go and pick the CVs. So we'll pick those CVs, go into the move CV function and what projected requires is a plane or some other entity to place those CVs. So in this case we're going to pick the plane and it's moved all of those CVs onto that plane. So we're now going to pick the next hull of CVs and we want to move those onto that plane using project and we just do that for each of the holes here. So what we should find is when we view this in the top view again that all of these CVs now lie on planes. Now clearly the CVs in this direction aren't very tidy at all but what the planes here give us the ability to do is to tidy that, those up even further. Now in order to keep those on those planes we can freely slide CVs around. So if I slide that CV there for example it's going to stay on that plane So we might tidy those up a bit. I'm not going to try and get a perfect result here, but just to give you an idea. So by sliding those points left to right, we keep them on the plane. If you slide them down this way, of course, it'll come off that plane. But if we look back at that top view again, and just double check, you can see all the CVs are staying on those planes. The other thing we can do is if we wanted to move that CV, for example, on this plane then we can obviously go and pick that plane and then we can move that CV around in the X, Y and Z of that plane so I can go and pick that CV and then move it in the Y direction of that plane any of those points can be moved in the Y direction or the X direction of course and then when we go back to the our reference plane here and look in the top view again. If we've done things right then they should still be on planes. To speed up that process you might go and use normal but of course what normal does is it will move them off the plane slightly so you would then have to go and use project again to get those back onto the planes. So it's a little less controlled than using the planes. So you can see for example there that's not, not very good at all because I've used normal, it's moved it off that plane and the same with that one. So we would have to go through the process again of, but it might be quite a, an efficient process but you'd have to go through the process again of picking those and then using projected with that plane to get those CVs lined up again. And obviously we can carry on doing that until that's nice and tidy in all senses. Here's another example where we've got some rather untidy CVs and we want to line those up a bit better. So again we can use planes here. Now on the left hand side we've got tangency here so we need to keep this tangent condition all the way along this edge. So we must maintain the position of those CVs. And on this edge we're happy with the shape of that so we want to maintain the CVs here. And this means we can use a plane using that point, that point and that point and we repeat that for each hull 
and then we put the CVs onto those planes. So we're going to try and do that similar to how we did this before. So we go into construction, planes with three points. Now I'm going to use control to try and snap to those CVs, but you may sometimes find that the snap doesn't quite happen to the CV itself, it may happen to the surface. It seems to work best if we keep them, the cursor away from the CVs. For example there, it's picked a point somewhere else. So we need to get rid of that one. So we just need to be very cautious of this. If you find that it's got the pick the wrong CV by by accident, if you hold the control down, you can actually toggle between different CVs. So there we've got our planes that we want to use. So because we've picked these first two CVs, when we rotate that around, you can see, for example, on this hull here, it's got that point and these two points all on the plane, and these are the points that we need to move onto that plane. Now let's go and pick this CP here. And we want to get these CVs onto that plane there. Now if we do what we did before, which was pick those CVs, so we only need to pick the CVs that we're going to change, which is these CVs here. Now you notice on this lower edge it says 0.08 degrees, so not entirely within tolerance, but very close. And we don't really want that to change very much. Now if we go into move CV, which is what we did before, and we click on projected, and then we pick the plane, you'll see that this lower angle has changed significantly. It's now 1.5 degrees. And the reason for that is because these CVs have been dropped onto that plane, normal to the plane. They're not sliding along these end tangents. And that gives us a, an angle change. So that's not really acceptable. So let's undo that. So another option is if we pick that CP, which we've already got there, and we go into the left view, you'll see we're now looking along the plane. So rather than using move CV, the other option is we go into surface edit and we use plane rise hull, and we're gonna use a view based plane. So in other words, that line there, and we've got closest boundary on. And what that means is that these CVs, rather than being dropped onto the plane, they're going to slide along these end tangents. So we should find that that angle doesn't change as much. So I've got single on, I'm just gonna pick that hull. And you can see the angle has changed a little bit, but it's only 0.17 as opposed to something like 1.5 degrees. So we can do that on all of these planes here. We just need to go along, pick the plane, look at it from the left-hand view, go into plane rise hull, pick that hull, and get it to align in that view. So we're getting some nice planarized CVs here. And this is a really good method on corners like this. And you can see on that, that edge where we had tangency before, it's maintained the tangency. So there's obviously some work to be done in bringing tangency to these edges here, but it's essentially what it's done is it's tidied up those CVs to give us a better fighting chance of getting all of this to align. So how do we create planes from scan data in the real world? So we've got a steering wheel here. Usually you would get some engineering information. You'd be told what the axis of the steering wheel was but assuming that we haven't got that information, then how do we go about creating a plane that's going to serve as our symmetry plane, our axis for revolve, and also our tool direction? Well, we can assume that the back surface of this wheel is only rotated in the y direction relative to the world axis. So what we'll do is we'll start off with a curve, just a straight line. It doesn't have to be accurate at this point. And I'm just going to move that into roughly what we think is the right position. Of course, I can zoom in and have a look at that more closely, but we're not gonna worry about that. So there's our straight line in the side view. So if we go in the front view, we can move that across until it's roughly in the center. 
Then we can build a draft surface on this. So we've got the y direction, we've got zero draft angle, and we're making it double sided, and then we just need to make sure it's big enough to cover the back of that scan data there. So let's analyze that in terms of the deviation of the surface of the scan. So we'll pick the surface and then we'll pick the scan. And I'm going to put the ramp distance at two mil, so the maximum that we think we might deviate by. And we're putting in the acceptable distance as 0.5 millimeters and see what we get. So that's sort of showing that there's only a few areas where it's within tolerance at the moment. So I'm deleting that curve, we don't need that. Now we created that MS draft surface off that line so we know that these edges go directly in the y direction and we've got to be careful that we keep that at all times. So let's go and move some CVs. So I'm going to move a CV hull here in the x direction. What I can't do is I can't move this one because then that'll take that out of the y direction. So I can only move the top hull and bottom hull and we'll see if we can get a better result in terms of deviation. So we're trying to get as much of that green as we possibly can. So something like that. So that's pretty much what the back surface should be like. Now we don't need the analysis on there anymore. Now we're going to create a plane of that. So I'm going to use geometry and I'm going to put that somewhere on there and maybe move it up into the center somewhere and we'll go into that plane. And we need to look at that plane, normal to the plane, and just move it around a bit until we think that we're roughly in the center. So actually I can use history here. And I can move that roughly into the center. We could put some circles in there and move those around and then position that at the center of the circle. That'd be another way of doing that. But I'm going to do this with surfaces instead of using curves. So we'll get rid of that back surface because we now we've got a plane which replaces that. It's got the same orientation. Now what we want to do is go into that plane because we've moved the plane but we didn't go into it. And we want to now try and put a revolve that approximates the main part of the steering wheel there. So the axis of the revolve is going to be the Z direction. And the way we're going to judge the what the profile looks like is by cutting some sections. So we're going to cut a section at X zero. So if I go into X and just put in 2000, then we'll get a section at X zero on there. And we'll go and zoom into there. So we're going to take this one as the example. Now we're going to create a circle first of all. And we're going to scale that down a bit. And it looks a very elliptical shape, so we're just going to assume that that's the case. So let's move that a little bit in this direction. And then we can use non-proportional scaling just to squash that up. Maybe move it a bit again. We can move it left to right. We can move it up and down. We can scale it in the two directions. Something like that. So that's going to be our profile curve. And now we're going to do a revolve of that shape. So we're going to surfaces revolve. And we want to use the Z axis of this plane. So we're going to pick those curves there. Now, whereas before I just did a half revolve, this time I'm going to do a 360. And we'll take the CVs off so that we can see the sections clearer. So there's some sections through the data. Don't really need the continuity checks on. And we'll cut some more sections here so that we can see a bit more detail about what's going on in here. So let's put in 20 sections. Now you can see that the top is obviously close because we're near that profile curve, but down the bottom we're not close at all. But we can use this manipulator in the middle. We can grab hold of that big sphere there and just move that up a bit until the lower section looks like it's close to the data. I'm going to put some more sections in. So the other sections I want are in the Y direction, just so that we can see left to right whether we're in the right position or not. And if we're not, then 
what we can do is we want to move the whole thing left to right so we can generate a vector of the current manipulator by saying retain vector. Now if we go and pick that vector so I'm using construction there and pick those curves so we've got to move the two together and then move them left to right in the x direction we can try just try and get a best fit left to right on the steering wheel. Now if we want to analyze that in terms of deviation we can do that of course. We can again go into deviation map pick those surfaces and then pick the mesh with the same deviation map on and you can see there's some areas outside of the 0.5 because it's a steering wheel, because it's leather wrapped, then we're not going to expect to get within 0.5 of this data. Of course, this data has been taken from a real vehicle rather than the clay model. So we'd probably be lucky to get within maybe a mil and a half, two mil. So we're putting a slightly larger ramp angle there and putting two mil as the acceptable distance. And so we're quite close. So we've got a vector now which is at the center of the steering wheel but our plane isn't quite in tune with that so we need to create a new plane so we need to get rid of that plane so i'll use construction again to get rid of that plane if we go into the rear view so this is in world space and we go into plane geometry and then pick that vector we'll get that plane which should be at 90 degrees to that vector But as before, it would be nice to have the orientation of that similar to world axis. It just makes everything easier in terms of viewing the data. So you can see X is going that way, Y is going that way, whereas our plane isn't quite around that, that way. So let's look at that in what's the front view to this plane. And we'll create a, a new plane. In fact, we don't need to go into the view particularly. We can just go into plane and we'll go world. Now, we, the, the reason I'm doing this is because if we go and query edit that, we can only rotate it this way. We can't rotate it the other way. And we can't separate that from the vector either. And it's because of the way that it's been built, we've only got that one option. And this is why I'm going into plane world. And then I'm going to put a new plane at the same origin point but this plane will allow us to move move the, the plane around so by clicking on these little arcs here if I click on the blue one there I'm going to move that to the green axis in other words the y-axis across here so I'm going to do that relatively by 180 degrees and then I want to get the x-axis which is the red one coming down this way so if I pick on the green one now we have to use the right hand thumb rule here and that tells us that it's going to be a positive 90 and that gives us the plane that we want and then we can get rid of the old plane as always we must check this geometry so we want to go and pick those construction elements so our vector and our plane and we just need to check these rotations. Now the rotations at the moment are relative to the current construction plane. So we've got to go into toggle CP, go back to the world axis to see the actual angles. So what we're expecting is a rotation just about Y. The fact that it says 180 doesn't really matter on a vector because that means nothing really to a vector. The important one is the Y direction. And the same in on the plane. We don't expect X or Z values and we've got zero on both of those so that's fine and we should find that that angle and that angle if we added those together or the absolute values there we should get 90 degrees in other words one's at 90 degrees to the other if we toggle back to that CP then we should also see that that relative to this CP the vector is at minus 90 it's pointing in the negative X direction and remember the Z direction is the zero angle and then the plane of course will be at zero 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 because it's to itself so for future reference we should give these some names so we'll call this 
steering axis and then we can call this steering plane for example and if at any time in the future we need to recreate this revolved shape we can just get rid of this one and we can go back into revolve pick those curves and if I go picked and pick that vector it's given us the same as before